This is Robbie Dillmore from the Christian Car Guy and Kingdom Pursuit, where we hear how God takes your passion and uses it to build the kingdom. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it and share it. But most of all, thank you for listening and for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. I see greatness in you. That's the title of the book I'm holding in my hand. I'm sitting next to a man who has a story. This man has suffered. He struggled. He has had trauma, and he has found Jesus Christ and found hope in him. His name is Pastor Larry Ragland. Pastor Larry, God bless you, man. Great to hang out with you. Well, thank you. It's my honor and my privilege to be with you, and uh, whatever we can do to help people, that's my heart. Thank well, you. I just love talking to people. I love hearing their stories. And folks, listen to me. You don't touch your dial. Just just tune in for just a second. Because I walked into a busy, crowded floor at the Religious Broadcasters Convention. And I walk up, this guy's signing books. There's no one at the table. I'm like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a book hawk, man. I will read. And, and then I see the title, I See Greatness in You. And then this guy, like, goes deep. Like, you go, like, into the inner caverns of the heart with me and my sister and my son-in-law who are with me. And I'm like, wow, how could you share this? You just met me. I'm a complete stranger. But God has done something in your life, hasn't he, brother? Yeah, well, I see greatness in you. The words, the five words, these are words that changed my life. Mm. And, and my heart is for the book that it would change lives as well. But to do a quick backstory of that is that, you know, I was I'm 55 years old at the time of this recording. Uh, and But when I was 10 years old, uh, it, my life culminated through a tremendous uh, life of abuse with my father. He was physically abused me, verbally abused me, and, you know, not only beat me, but he traumatized me greatly. And at 10 years old was the event that I detail in the book of when he, my mom finally was getting ready to finally leave after me, threatening many times before. And he took a double barrel 12 gauge shotgun, loaded it in front of me, stuck both barrels in his mouth, and put my finger on the trigger and screamed at me to pull the trigger and blow his brains out. I was 10 years old. And and I screamed, Daddy, I'm not, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to do that. And he said, well, either way, you leave with your mother. You pull the trigger or I pull the trigger. But either way, you kill me. And you spend the rest of your life knowing you killed your father. That was the kind of trauma that set me on a course of just, I, I can't explain it. Well, you know, all my life, I've dreamed and hoped that he I hated my father and one day I screamed out and I detail this deeply in the book I screamed out I hate that man I wish he wasn't my father and without thinking about it my mother said he's not and I was 10 years old it was right after we left and I found out that my biological father was out there somewhere so from age 10 to my junior year in high, year in high school I dreamed of finding this man and through the most incredible, almost like a movie experience that happened to me as a junior in high school, sitting in a typing class, I found my father without even looking for him. It was just an incredible thing. I still can't even believe it happened. Well, six months later, he's in my life. I found him. And six months after that, he looked at me and said, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Get out of my life. And I never saw him again. So I began to be that guy in school. You know, I was popular. I was the jock. I was I was the life of the room, but it was all a fraud. It was all a fake. I was a liar. I was a manipulator. I was really my father. I'd become my father and because that's what he was. And, and through that manipulation, I found the prettiest girl in the school. And that being the jock, you know, I convinced her to agree to marry me, a senior in high school. She graduates high school. She, I gave her a ring. I'm getting ready to get married. And uh, But everything was a lie. And uh, it all came crumbling down when I was arrested. And uh, standing outside of that courthouse, she was 18. I was 20. And I asked her, I said, please leave. Please leave because I know what I'm going to do to you. I know what I'm going to do to us. You, your life with me is not going to be a good life. And that little 18-year-old girl looked at me, grabbed my hand, and said, I'm not leaving you, Larry. And I said, why would you stay with me? You know where this is headed. She said, because when I look into your eyes, I see greatness in you. Mm. And those five words took me to my knees. I was 20 years old. I fell down. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what, what do you see in me? There's nothing great in me. She said, Larry, you don't see it, but I see it, and I'm going to stay with you until you see it one day yourself. He's pastoring right now the Solid Rock Church in Birmingham, Alabama. He's authored books. He's led all kinds of groups. He's helped folks plant churches. I mean, that's why you plant churches, so that people can see the greatness of God in them, right? I mean, this is so fundamental, and we have a culture that's beating people up, beating dads up, portraying them as sissified or wimps, and, you know, taking a back seat and not, you know, not manning up, and we have all these gender confusion, but... 
the, there's something about discovering the beauty and greatness of God. To, yes. to talk about yeah. th- this at the very core of every human being. Absolutely. People listening to this station right now have been beaten up a lot. Yeah, well, the introduction to the book is called The DNA of Greatness mm. because the DNA of greatness is actually in every single human being, no matter who you are, no matter what race you are, no matter what nation you were born in. Why? Because we were created in the image of God. So therefore, the DNA of greatness is in us. And now I was blessed to have a Sandy, but most people don't have a Sandy. Most, you know, and there's, one of the big sins in scripture is pride. And when people begin to see the greatness in themselves totally on their own and they, they create their image of themselves totally on their own, that's pride. So you really don't know who you are by yourself. You need someone else to see it in you. And that's that was designed by the divine nature of God. So Sandy saw that in me and pulled it out of me. So one of the things I say in that book, because it's in you, whether you think it's in you or not, and this book is your Sandy. We want this book to, to call that DNA of greatness out of you and show you that the greatness is not of your own doing. The greatness is because God put it in there. And that's why it says, greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. I love it. So it's really not, you know, people see this title and may say, oh, self-help. Oh, go love yourself. That's a big catchphrase in the culture today. But you, you, you know, you know, you, you, one of these quotes in here I just looked at, it says, you know, I was dumped by two fathers. I mean, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of folks say, you know, I got a dad wound. You got a couple dad wounds. You got a biological father checking out early. You got a, you got another father at 10 years old, abusive, trying to get you to kill him and yeah. Yeah. awful stuff. So like, this is going, this is going deep into the need yes. for Take off the fig leaves, Absolutely. Adam, Eve, yeah. and find healing in Christ. So this is going deep in the gospel. Oh, absolutely. Well, well, one of the things that, I, well, this is my first book, and I'd never written a book, so I'd ask God, you know, God, I, I'm really asking you to help me write in a creative way. Mm-hmm. And it is written in a creative way. I give God all the cra- praise on that. It is because book... The, the pattern of the book is three or four paragraphs of my story, three or four paragraphs of a Bible character that lived my life. Yeah. So I'm trying to show that this mm. is not just my life, it's your life. Every single thing that you've gone through, every trauma, every up and every down, every mountain and every valley is in Scripture. And so it's, it's applicable no matter who you are. I had a guy tell me one time that read the book, he said, I had the greatest father, the greatest mother, the greatest brothers and sisters. My life was the perfect leave it to beaver family. He said, but this book still changed my life because I didn't have a father that dropped me, but I've had people that dropped mm. me. So everyone mm. has had someone to drop them and crush them. In this book, I thank God for the way that he gave me to write it. It will appeal to anyone, no matter what they've gone through. So people have been through all kinds of stuff out there. Uh, Larry, as we wrap up, what's your challenge, man, with all you've been through? I mean, your wife, Sandy, it's funny. She she, uh, she wrote the, uh, the, the forward, yeah, sure the did. preface to your yeah, book. Sure did. And then as we're looking at the... Uh, as we're as we're getting to go on the to record a national show, yes, yes. her name pops up yeah. on your phone to call yeah, you, right. and you said, "Stu, I know this is big time ratings yes, and all, yes, but yes, you know yes. my wife's calling, and I got to take right. a call. I got to take a call for my wife." Exactly. <laughs> but but she she stayed with you and loved you and saw yeah, the greatness yeah. of God in you. Yeah, yeah. So this 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 is for marriages. This is for anybody it's and everyone. Same go same. go ahead Absolutely. and close this out here. Speak to the people out there yeah. driving down the road or just. Just maybe they just found this as a last resort, and maybe they're at the end of their rope. Yeah. Well, we, we're in a world right now that is full of tragedy, anxiety, stress, depression. Never seen anything like it. None of us has ever seen anything like it. And I, I really am praying that this, will, this book will touch mm. you where you're at to show you that, you know. But let me just say this real quick. That was the great part of that story, but we still went through as a marriage trauma after trauma Mm -hmm. after trauma. We detailed that, but we had something in us that helped us sustain every time that we were dropped by life, and that is Jesus Christ. And you're right. I was worried about that title. I was like, people are going to think this is a self-help title of finding their greatness, but that's not what this book is about. It is about finding the greatness Mm. of God. And when you find the greatness of God, anything that you are facing in your life, you can get over it. You can get over it through Jesus Christ. People want to get to know you better, uh, learn more about your book, your videos, your church planning. What's the best way, Larry? Best way is go to LarryRaglan.com or LarryRaglan.tv. I have a YouTube program. I have a podcast. Mm. I pastor a church in Birmingham, Alabama. All of that information, all my social media links are all at LarryRaglan.com. Cool. And now I know why you, you you engaged us, even though we're complete strangers walking in. There's a million people there. And you you looked at us, you said, I see greatness in you. And we're like, wait, exactly. that's the name of your book. Yeah. So that all comes together, doesn't it? That's right. Exactly. That's, that's my heart. That's why I want to try to find as much greatness as I can, because I want them to, I want this book and I want my words to be their Sandy. Because that right there 
shows off the greatness of our God. Amen. Where God said, to, he said to Moses, and I will now show Pharaoh what a great God I am. And over and over again, you have in Exodus, yes. there's no one like our God. And think about this, the way he shows his greatness to the world is through us. Mm. That's how the world knows who God is. Yeah. So if we serve a great God, then we have to know about that greatness that's within us or they'll never know the great God we serve. Yeah. Are you aglow with God's greatness? Go. And he even works through broken vessels, the 2 Corinthians 3, the cracked pots, yes. or chapter 4, we have this treasure in earth and vessels. Yes. Even through brokenness and pain and messy stuff, yes. God shows his greatness. Amen. He shows his greatness through it all. In fact, that's the way he shows his greatness. In my weakness, he is made strong. So when, when you, that's when you find out who you really are in God, when everything has fell apart. So I want to encourage everybody this, listening to this broadcast, no matter where you're at, even if you were raised in church and you think you've got this thing, take a moment and drop everything you're doing and cry out to God and say, God, I need you now more than I've ever needed you in my life. Help me to be everything you've called me to be. Because remember, that's what he says. The greatness of God is within you. Greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. What you have inside of you is greater than what the world has inside of it. This is the Truth Network.